What's up guys, it's Austin here from Royal Highness Python and in today's video I'm going to give you guys a very simple explanation on how the banana gene is sex linked because a lot of people understand it but they don't fully understand it so I'm going to get right into it. I'm not going to jump into anything about the supers because that's a little bit too much and I fully don't understand it so we'll just do the basics. Before we get into all that cool stuff, huge shout out to, I'm not going to try saying the name. Uh, this is my friend Avi, and he's in Israel, so if you want to go and follow him, it's a.z underscore morphs on Instagram, and thanks for the really cool shirt, and he's definitely not slacking on the back, so if you guys would go and check him out once again, a.z underscore morphs on Instagram, I would appreciate it, he would appreciate it, he has some really cool stuff out in Israel, he can't import or export because of the laws, but he's still working really well with what he has there and you guys should definitely go and check him out. So now I'm going to go show you the bananas and talk to you about how the sex linked works. So most codominant genes work. Well, we'll use this lesser right here as an example. So right here we have a lesser and if you were to breed this lesser to a normal like we have right here, half of the babies would come out lesser and the other half should theoretically come out normal. And that's the odds that 50% would be lesser and 50% would be normal. But banana works a little bit differently. So if we were to go take a banana, like I have right over here, here is my banana super pastel Mojave spot nose clown. It's one of the only bananas I have in my collection. And if I were to breed him to a normal, and he didn't have any of the other genes, and he was just the banana, half of the babies will come out banana, and half the babies will come out as normal. But banana takes it a step further, and basically, 95% of the bananas that come out will be males and then 5% of the time you'll get a female if your banana came from a male making banana and a male making banana is basically any banana that was produced by a male banana and basically banana just like any other gene resides on a chromosome and chromosomes usually have two alleles and so basically um, one allele is masculine and one allele is feminine so let's say this is the masculine side. Banana is tied to the masculine uh, side of the trait. So basically when you are going to breed that out, it's going to get stuck to the masculine side of that allele. So basically every time the gene will show up, you will get a male. It's kind of very confusing to understand. It's the first gene inside of all pythons we have that actually does this. And it was very shocking at first to understand. I know Mike Wilbanks did a video on the beginning, uh, a couple years ago, maybe 2015, 2016, about it, and you guys can definitely go check that out because he has a lot of great information there, and he actually drew out a whole bunch of stuff. I don't have a board here. I wish I did where I can go and draw it out for you. Uh, you're just stuck listening to my voice and looking at these beautiful animals here, and basically that's how it works for male makers. So a male maker is a male pr banana produced from a male banana. But sometimes, like I said, 5% of the times, you'll get a female banana when you do pair a male banana. And female bananas do not have any sex-linked traits. So if you were to breed a female banana to a normal, half the babies will come out banana once again, the other half will come out normal, but those half that came out banana will be both male and female. So not like the male bananas, which only make males 95% of the time. The female bananas make both males and females equally. So half will be female and half will be male theoretically. And any male that is produced from a female banana will then be a female maker, which this is where it gets confusing because some people like to label male makers as female makers and female makers as male makers because they do not fully understand what's going on. So when you get, get a male banana from the female, since the female has no sex linked, uh, when it goes to the male, it's not on the male chromosome. It's actually on the female chromosome. So when the banana is passed down, it can only be passed down to a female. It might be a little bit hard to understand. I'm sure if you watch this video a few more times, you'll understand it. And many other people also made a lot of videos explaining this. I'm not going to get into super bananas because that is a whole headache. I kind of understand it. It's really hard to get your head, uh, wrap your head around it. And for me to explain it, it's going to be a lot more uh, difficult to understand than what I'm explaining already. So I'm just going to stay away from that. Maybe in the future when I get a board, I can draw it out for you and show you all the percentages. But it's very hard to understand just off the top of the head. So I'm going to leave that for a future video. And that's pretty much going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's going to be my very simple explanation of how banana is sex linked. And I just want to show you guys off this cool female right now. This is a super fly 
banana female and she's about 1100 grams she just got over that 1000 gram wall so hopefully she could be breeding soon and I'll pair it to a clown and make some really cool het clowns and like you guys already know all the males that come from her will be female makers which is really cool so hope you guys enjoy the video and you guys all understood my explanation I might have confused a few of you but I'm sure most of you got it so that's going to be it. So don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. And peace out.